Phyllis Blindate, and here she is. To blind date now we've had a lot of love stories on this series but we're hoping we've saved the best till last one week ago we gave Gemma from Cheshire a second chance to find love after her disastrous first blind date with a love rat named Craig <laughs> she picked Chris from Birmingham who was also hoping it would be second time lucky after he was ditched earlier in the series <laughs> Gemma finally bagged her man? We'll find out a little later. But first, we've got three guys who won't need to be asked twice if they're picked for a date tonight. So please say hello to the fellas. <laughs> Hello, my name's Jim, I'm 28, and I'm from Glasgow. <laughs> the reason I'm on Blind Date is to, to find a girl who can put up with my obsession with quiz shows. I can't get enough of the quick fire, high stake action of shows like Bullseye, <laughs> Family Fortunes, and the ultimate in quiz show porkers, Countdown. <laughs> so if tonight's picker is a quiz show junkie, I'll definitely was her in? Hi, my name's David. I'm 31 and I'm a personal fitness trainer from Surrey. The reason I'm on blind date is to find a girl who will appreciate my old-fashioned values. I'm looking to find my very own little lady to shower with love and affection. I guess that makes me a bit of a softie. But I reckon the girls like that. Hi. My name's Dimitri. I'm 28 and I'm a financial advisor from Cheltenham. <laughs> the reason I'm on blind date is to find a girl with a sense of adventure. Extreme sports and risky endeavors are my thing. So if the picker is looking for the original action man, she'd better buckle up. Because Danger is my middle name. Well, there they are, three fab fellas looking for fun. And have we got a fun girl for them. She's lovely, she's Leslie, and she's from Kent. Come in, Leslie! <laughs> Looking fab, 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 Leslie. <laughs> and here's our lovely studio audience and everybody at home waiting and dying to know Ooh. what you do for a living. Well, so I work on cruise ships in entertainment. <laughs> so, Leslie, you're a lovey as well. I am. <laughs> all this interferes with your love life, doesn't it, Leslie? It does. I can't seem to get, you know, a long-term relationship. I'm here, there and everywhere, travelling oh. around. Come down to this. <laughs> Come down to this. Is it true that you've got a nickname? I have the sailor. The sailor? <laughs> well, hello. I know. <laughs> Why? Well, I, well, they say that sailors have um, a girl in every port. I tend to um, have a boy in every port, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for romance, Stella, because yeah. I do a lot of travelling, I work very hard, and I go to lots of lovely countries and meet a lot of um, gentlemen. Right. And say, but not true love. So fire away with your first question, Leslie. Okay. Hello, boys. Hello, Leslie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, question number one. When I was younger, I used to be a bit of a tomboy. I loved rugby and football and all things boyish. 
Oh, yes. And then I reckon this has helped me to stay in touch with my masculine side. What type of thing do you do that keeps you in touch with your feminine side? And that goes to number one. Well, Leslie, I'm a part-time model, which requires me to have the odd manicure, a bit of massage, and a little bit of blonde highlights in the hair. But most importantly, I do have to have my chest waxed. Which, Leslie, allows me to bring you closer to my masculine side. Question to number two, please. Well, like so many ladies, I like to have a good old gossip about my friends' romantic lives. But after tonight, the talk of the town is going to be you and me. And same question to number three, please. To get in touch with my feminine side, I put on my penny and do a bit of baking. But don't worry, <laughs> Leslie. Because just like my scones, I always rise to the occasion. Question number two now. It's important to me that not only a man looks good, but he smells good as well. I've always, I always like to sniff a guy's shirt, okay, to check if they've got the right aftershave for that. <laughs> the right aftershave for me. It tells a lot about a man. Really? So I asked Scylla to, um, the lads to bring a shirt from last night. And so I can test if they've got the whiff of romance you on their did, shirt. You did indeed. Oh, no. Leslie, you're weird. Can we have the shirt? <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? It's very nice. <laughs> this is... <laughs> number one shirt. I hope they've only worn it once, did I? I'm I don't clear. know. <laughs> You're the one who asked to smell them. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Oh, do you? Mm. Do you want to have a smell? No, I don't. <laughs> I've seen them. I don't want to smell them as well. <laughs> well, that's quite nice. Number one, that's quite florally. What does that does that go into your feminine yeah. side? It's quite flowery. It's um, light, I would say, pretty fresh, and um, pretty fruity, I would say, as well. A bit like myself. Oh. And this, is, this is number two. <laughs> Have a quick sniff. Uh, I'm not too, too keen on the colour on that one, Oh, but, what, you don't like this colour? <laughs> Okay. Gorgeous on you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite musky. Is it? Mm. Number two, that's quite musky. What does that say about you? To be honest, I'm not too fussed about the smell. All I do know is that it was on special offer down at the local market. <laughs> She's going in right on this one, number three. She's getting her nose stuck right into this. <laughs> I chose that aftershave because it's just like yours truly. It's a bit rugged, but very, very spicy. Whoa. Whoa, very, very spicy. Well, you've done the sniffing test well and truly there, yes, Leslie. I have. And now it's making your mind up time because you've got to get shut of one of those boys. And which shirt didn't turn you on? I mean, are you going to get rid of number one, number two, or number three? Number three. You turned down number three. That was our Dimitri from Cheltenham. Come in, Dimitri. last and final question Leslie okay my final question whenever I date a guy I need to be sure that he knows his good and his bad points I want each of you to tell me honestly 
What's the best and worst things about you? Ooh, that's a dynamite question. Mm -hmm. What are you going to ask first? I'll do number two, I think, first. The best thing about me has to be the fact that I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Helps being on blind date, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Uh, the worst thing about me is that I'm about to come off the market. Oh. OK, and same question to number one. I would say my good point would definitely have to be I'm very, 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 very generous. Oh. My bad point, I would say, is I'm totally skint. as your blind date. Are you going to choose number one or number two? Mm, number one. <laughs> number two, do not despair, Chuck, all right? OK. Because she could change her mind once she's, once she's seen number one, basically. <laughs> so go off and hide yourself. I shall see you in a mo. See you later. OK, Leslie, this is it. Your date, for the time being, at least. You chose number one. That was Jim from Glasgow. Come in, Jim. Hey, Jim, what do you think of our Leslie? Absolutely stunning, Silla. Absolutely you stunning. like what you see? Oh, very much. So has Leslie found her ideal man? Or could she do better with number two, who she's yet to meet? Is her heart telling her to date or willing her to ditch? <laughs> Find out after the break. I shall see you then. See you in a moment. <laughs> Leslie usually goes for boy band tights, so out of the two that are left, I think she should go for number one because he's the most boy bandish out of the two. So I'm going to say date number one. Number two. Two beaches. Cruises. for number two behind our screen. Two, beaches, cruises, activity holidays, family holidays, luxury hotels, and villas. And there's up to £200 worth of holiday vouchers. Absolutely free for every reader. Not booked your holiday yet? Start playing I Need a Holiday. Get me out of here. Only in tomorrow's Mail on Sunday. Pick me and I'll be really cruisy. the break, Leslie chose Jim, but she can still swap him for number two behind our screen. At home, you already know what her best friend Melanie thinks she should do, but Leslie can't see that. So what is going to happen? Will he be made up or stood up? What do you reckon, Jan? <laughs> Date or ditch? <laughs> I'm sure they're all yelling at you at home as well. Are you going to date or are you going to ditch? Well, Silla, I'm going to date. <laughs> you turned down number two, you haven't even I seen know, him. Oh, well, you did turn down and that was number two and here's our David from Surrey. Come in David. Well who is gonna choose? Oh, I 
out to you, you can read. Okay. <laughs> A date to Antigua. Oh, right. oh, that's it's time to jet off to the Caribbean for a day full of fun and sun. You'll stay in luxury at the St. James's Club from where you'll go kayaking through the mangroves and sailing round the island's stunning coastline. Then you'll discover the true Caribbean way of life as you go shopping at St. John's Market before partying until dawn as you experience the island's brilliant nightlife. Wow. It's a fabulous sunshine date, so make sure you come back glowing about each other. I am just so pleased for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, wish them well. Leslie and Jim. <laughs> They didn't have far to go for their day to marvellous Milton Keynes. <laughs> but is home really where the heart is? Let's have a look at their day diary. Welcome to the award-winning Whittlebury Hall Hotel and Spa. Would you like to come this way and I'll show you to your room? Thank you. Okay. Ian's not the sort of guy that I would usually go for, but what I think is really attracting me to him is his sense of humour. <laughs> He's just really, really, really funny. Um, that's a great laugh. Already we're sort of hitting it off, you know, really well. A great sense of humour and, um, and... Well, she must have, she's laughing at some more really bad jokes. No, it's just nice. So, I don't know, maybe I could be changing <laughs> my type of man. <laughs> Now. I mean, I haven't given up on uh, any of my romance, so uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day. I've um, got some more fun activities coming up. I think tomorrow I'm going to go ice skating with the Milton Keynes ice hockey team. So I said that to her, and I think it was um, a relief for her as well as me when I said that. imagined what Ian would look like. Young, slim, with typical boyish looks. Not the type I'd usually go for at all. When I saw number two, my usually high standards changed rapidly, and I thought things couldn't possibly get any worse. So when I saw Vicky with her smiling face and infectious laugh, I knew I couldn't go far wrong. On the rock climbing wall, Ian was right behind me. Now, normally, if a guy gets that close, looking at my wet, soggy backside, I'd be horrified, and he probably would too. But as it was Ian, I wasn't that bothered. That evening, using my local knowledge, I decided to take Vicky down the village pub. Rather than the sounds of the ocean and the sunset backdrop, we had Dave's mobile disco and I pound on the pool table. Perfect. That evening, Ian suggested that we go down the local. 
We had such a laugh. Ian's great company, but the problem was, I just didn't fancy him. The next day, Vicky and I went training with the Milton Keynes ice hockey team. Vicky looked like a cross between a sumo wrestler and Bambi taking his first steps. It was hilarious. All my dreams came true at ice hockey. There was me in a male changing room, surrounded by half-naked, beefy ice hockey players. I spent the next two hours panting after the players, let alone the puck. Pity there wasn't a female team for Ian to flirt with as well. On the last night, we went for a beautiful candlelit dinner, and with the right gal, it would have been the perfect romantic scene. Unfortunately, Vicky's just not the one for me. Ian and I were treated to an exclusive meal in a lovely romantic setting. The thing is, we would have preferred to have gone down the Red Lion for a few games of pole, because that's what mates do after all, and I'd like to think that Ian is a mate. On first impressions, Vicky is all hair, nails and fake tan, but underneath all that, I think she's a bit of a geezer bird. She's great fun to be with, <laughs> up for a laugh, and I'll buy her a pint any time. I had an absolute ball in Milton Keynes, and that wouldn't have been possible without Ian. I only hope that when he goes to watch the ice hockey team play, that he puts in a good word for me. <laughs> This is a bit of a first on blind date. I mean, look at this. You're holding hands. I'm very confused here. Are you, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. I'm still being shaking. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> if you would have picked, say, for instance, a beautiful Caribbean holiday for your date, would it have made any difference? Well, to be honest, I think um, had I picked Vicky and gone to the Caribbean holiday, I don't think we would have got on so well. It was literally because we went to Milton Keynes and I live local to Milton Keynes. <laughs> it's like 15 miles away from where I live. Um, so it was, it was the, the case of like, you know, we're in here now, let's make the best of what we've got. We're, it, yeah, we're here to have a good time and the date was a bonus, you know, the destination was a bonus. So we'll have a good time wherever we go. And um, as it turned out, Vicky's very like-minded from the, the meal after the show immediately. We both said, like, let's just give it our best shot and have a real good time. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. And... So you decided really that early on, yeah, yeah. I think so. The minute you went out for a meal after the show. Well, like, I can't understand that. I mean, you'd hardly met, and then you really decided, just uh, during the dinner, that you were going to be good mates. Why was that? I don't know. I, think, I, I really don't know. I, I, I just... I don't know, because he's a, he's a good-looking guy. He's got such a fantastic personality. We get on so well. I don't know. Maybe coming down the line, you don't know. We could get together. Because I'm definitely going to see him again, definitely, without a doubt. That's it. Well, you often hear a lot of people say that they'll see each other and keep in touch, but we're definitely going to keep in touch. And... I can't figure this out. Can you, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Do you know what's shouting out at me what's up, here? Sarah? What's up? No, no, what's shouting out at me? I don't know about you. This is like when Harry met Sally all over again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they started off at mates. And I bet you, in a couple of weeks' time, you'll be sitting in that cafe and she'll be bashing that table going, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a revelation to me, an indeed blind date. Uh, it's so lovely to see that people, so matey, without yeah, no yeah. romance it's whatsoever. Yeah, great time. Well, let me know. I mean, if romance does <laughs> develop, let me be the first to know, will you? Oh, I've got your number, Scylla. I shouldn't have thought have you, you should... Yeah, you slipped it in the door, didn't you? Like, no, good night. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, two mates, no love. Wish them well. It's our Ian and Vicky. <laughs> well, still to come, we'll meet the dishy guy who's got to choose from one of these three tempting girls. So come in, the ladies. <laughs> Remember, still to come, Gemma and Chris will be here to tell us whether they found love on the rebound after their day to Canada. But now it's time to meet three ladies, all hoping it will be first time lucky tonight. So tell us who you are, girls. Hello, my name is Agatha, I'm 20, and I'm a student from Poland. <laughs> The reason I'm on blind date is to show the Brit boys just how us Polish princesses can love. 
We're sexy, caring, and very adoring. And tonight, I'm hoping to find my very own red, white, and blue British boy to play with. Whoa! Hi, my name's Kirsten. I'm 22, and I'm a credit controller from South Africa. <laughs> the reason I'm on blind date is because I'm sick of vain South African men who are only interested in what clothes they wear and cars they drive. You British men are far funnier and you wear your heart on your sleeve just the way I like it. Hello, my name is Pilar, I'm 24 and I'm a researcher from Spain. The reason I'm on blind date is because I choose pretty skies over Spanish senores any day. Mediterranean guys are jealous and possessive, whereas the British boys are gorgeous and play hard to get. And me amor, I love a good chase. Come up the moment, come up the man. His name is Daniel. And he's from Middlesex, so come as forth, Daniel! <laughs> Six foot four. And you're British through and through. I am. And judging by the size of you, six foot four, and looking at that shirt, it's very similar to a rugby shirt. It is. You love your rugby, is that right? I absolutely love my rugby. And you love playing rugby? I do. I, ch I make sure I'm at every training session, and I make sure I'm at every game, unless I'm injured. So any girl who wants to be with me, I'm afraid she's got to come second fiddle to rugby. <laughs> if she wants to go shopping, she wants to paint her nails, she wants to go and see her mum. I'm afraid she can't because I want to down the club and I want to show her off to all my friends and all my players. Oh, you do. You I do. do. I want to be proud of her. And if you have a good game or even not so good game, you get battered and bruised, what happens then? Can she go home for a tea, for instance? No. I've just got to have reviving, soothing hands to get me ready and for a massive night out dancing. Fire away oh, with your first to... question, Dan. OK. Hi, girls. Hello. Okay, question number one. My email address is Tiger by Night, which I think sums me up perfectly. What would your ideal email address be and why? And that goes to number one. My email address would have to be Agatha at 24-7 because once you see me, and I can guarantee you, you will want to be logged on to me all of the day and all of the night. <laughs> OK, and the same to number two. With my long blonde hair, dazzling green eyes and gorgeous long legs, my email address would have to be grrr. Because that's exactly what you're going to be doing, Tiger, when you get to see me. Oh. And uh, same to number three, please. My email address will have to be meet me at my place. So once you click on to me, your computer won't be saying you've got mail. He'll be saying, you've got female. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know what to do. You've got to ask one more question. That's what you've got to do. OK, number two. If I like a woman, and for some reason my looks and charm aren't working, then my wistful puppy dog smile will always win them over. <laughs> what do you resort to when all else fails to win over your man? And that's to number two. Being a sexy South African, if all else fails, I will gaze deep into your eyes, flutter my eyelids, and say, hey, little puppy, fancy going for a walk? OK, and the same to number one. Us Polish girls never fail because we're both beautiful and intelligent. So, Daniel, use your brains and pick this beauty. And to number three, please. Well, Daniel, 
I'll show you my sexy Spanish pout. And I'll guarantee you, I'll soon be saying, Daniel, besame mucho, which means, Daniel, kiss me more. I can do that. Yeah, no, I'm sure you could, but you've got to kiss one goodbye now. Oh. Are you going to kiss goodbye to number one, number two, or number three? I'm afraid it's going to have to be number one. You turned down number one. That was Agatha from Poland. Come in, Agatha. Agatha. You see, now we were getting confused. Why did you turn down Agatha? I don't know now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. Never <laughs> mind. Never mind. Thick <laughs> <Big> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. Agatha, ladies and gentlemen. It all hangs on this third and final question. <laughs> okay. This question involves a couple of scenarios for the girls, Silla. <laughs> okay, this is for number two. As you know, I love my rugby, and sometimes after games, all my mates pile around for a party. If I landed unexpectedly back at our place with all my mates, would you A, whisper in my ear to get rid of them all because you have a very special surprise for me, <laughs> or B, get on the phone, invite all your girlfriends over and to join the party? Well, Daniel, I'm a big rugby fan myself. I would have to say B. <laughs> I'd have preferred A, really. Oh, right. <laughs> Get rid of the lads. Yeah. Well, mates you see every week, don't you? Oh, dear. This is to number three. Being an outgoing, friendly kind of guy, my ex-girlfriends of mine have sometimes thought I was flirting with other women. So if you saw me chatting away to another girl, would you A, come over and introduce yourself to her, making sure she knew you were mine, or B, just leave me to it, knowing I'm completely trustworthy? Well, Daniel, I'll definitely come over to meet her and make sure she knows I'm yours and you are mine. Do you like that reply? Was that any better? Yeah, I'm pleased all round. <laughs> You're pleased all round, but it's making your mind up time oh. now. That it really is making your mind up time. Uh, not this time. <laughs> well, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Who is going to be your blind date just for the moment? Are you going to choose number two or number three? Number three. <laughs> oh, what can I say, number two? <laughs> Hide yourself away. I'll see you in a mo. All right, sweetheart. <laughs> Okay, Daniel, here is your blind date for this evening, and maybe for the rest of the week. You chose number three, and that was Pilar from Spain. Come in, Pilar. <laughs> Hello, Pilar. You see, I'll be asking about anything. Now, Daniel, do you go for the tall rugby types? Oh, yes, I love the tall and blonde and British look. You do. <laughs> well, so as Daniel and Peel on me for the first time, we're going to take a short break. But while we're away, Daniel must decide if he fancies her or if he favours number two, who he's yet to meet. Will we see dating or will we see ditching? Bye, now <laughs> in a couple of minutes. See you then. <laughs> Gone for number three, she's not his normal type, but he's a big lad, she's a big girl. I think they'll get on famously. And he should date. Ditch, date. At home, you've already seen. Holiday Airline are back in Chaos Hour, Tuesday from 8, ITV1. Ditch. Ditch. Well, hello and welcome back. Now, 
before the break, Daniel picked Pila. But would he be better off with number two? He's yet to see. At home, you've already seen what Daniel's friend Simon thinks he should do. But Daniel can't see that. So is she his girl of the future or just a thing of the past? What do you think, everyone? <laughs> Date or ditch, what is he going to do? to do this like a man are you going to date or are you going to ditch well so long i'm gonna do something that's not gonna upset her because she's probably used to it i'm gonna ditch <laughs> <laughs> Too young for me. Oh, too too much. Much. Age is only a number. Oh, yeah. Don't look too closely at me when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Pila, what oh, can well. I say? Yeah. Better look. Yeah. <laughs> swayed by the green eyes, the long legs, and the blonde hair. And you will not be disappointed because here's your blind date for this evening and the rest of the week. You chose number two. That was Kirsten from South Africa. Come in, Kirsten. <laughs> So they're the long legs. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the green eyes. Yes, they're green. They're very green. All we need to know now is where you're going on your blind date. Good luck. And to read as well? Please. Okay. A day to Budapest. Budapest! <laughs> to Budapest. You're off to Hungary for a date of surprises in this fascinating city. You'll stay in five-star luxury at the Kapinski Hotel called Venus, from where you'll visit the exquisite royal palaces and take a dip in the Roman baths. Well, you're used to that, aren't you? No, right. <laughs> jumping Second in with the fellas. This time you'll be jumping in with her. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Then it's time to fall into each other's arms as you go ice skating before hitting the city's buzzing bars and clubs. It's a beautiful city you'll never forget, so just remember to come home in love. Oh. 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, wish them both well. Dan 